Hi there, Marina Newington, founder of Power System, a five-step process designed to help entrepreneurial women set the foundations for time and financial freedom. And I am so happy to see you all. I am so happy to be here. Um, it is lovely to come to you from a new location. As uh, some of you who follow me may know, I have recently moved house. So this is the new filming area. And filming is what I want to talk to you about today because um, we are all spending so much time on camera now. It is not even funny. Um, whether you want to be on camera or you don't want to be on camera, whether you're using Zoom, Skype, uh, Microsoft Teams, Facebook, uh, no matter what you're using, we are for work and for pleasure having to do things virtually and remotely. So a lot of us find ourselves on camera. And what I wanted to talk to you about today was six tips to be camera ready. So a lot of us have have not been on camera before, or if we have, it's been really grudgingly. Now myself personally, I have to tell you, I do not have a shy bone in my body. I love being on camera. I love doing videos, as you know, because I come to you live, I come to you recorded, and this is a milieu where I am really, really comfortable. But I know lots of people aren't comfortable and they're really scared about recording videos and doing videos, and I will do a uh, separate live for you all about uh, my top tips for recording a video and for doing lives. But today I want to talk to you specifically about dealing with um, the webcam, which I am looking at right now. So um, a lot of us are faced with doing remote working and remote partying. So um, have you heard of having a quarantini? <laughs> <laughs> with your colleagues and virtual dinner parties. And um, so whether it's work or social, a lot of us find ourselves um, in front of the camera. And um, I wanted to talk to you about how you can be your best and look your best when you are in the situation so you can feel comfortable you can feel secure and you can focus on what you're saying and not everything that's going on behind you and also um you know they always say that uh you don't get a second chance at making a first impression. So how you present yourself on camera also really unfortunately, but in reality affects how people perceive you and how they um, interact with you. So let's dive in. And um, the first thing, the very first thing and the most important thing, okay, the most important thing is what you're saying in your message. But after that, the next most important thing is the lighting. Oh my God, the lighting. I'm looking at myself right now. So what you really, 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 really want to do is sit in front of an open window. This is the most important thing. And in fact, because I do so much um, camera work, when we moved into this house, one of my first priorities in setting up my home office was, where am I going to be filming? Where do I have a great source of light? So I don't know if you can notice, I mean, I'm playing around with the backgrounds and things right now, because like I said, I just moved in, so I have to figure it out. But I don't have any lights on in this room. The lights are all off and it's actually fairly dark in this room, but I have a window behind my laptop. I'm filming on my laptop right now. So the light is coming at me and it lights you up. It lights you up and um, it gives you an effect that nothing else will. So it's best to shoot during the day if possible, mornings, afternoons, but in the daylight. If you have to shoot at night, then you can take a light and put it behind your computer and have it coming at you. The other thing is that you don't want the light coming at you from the side or this side or somewhere else. And God forbid, do you want the light coming from behind you? Because if you have the light coming from behind you and you have the window here, then you are just a dark silhouette and nobody can see your face and nobody can interact with you. So the number one takeaway, if you don't get anything else from this live, if you don't get anything else from this, is your lighting. It is the most important and the most critical. So please, please, please try to make sure to film in front of a window. So have a window behind you with the light streaming at you face on. It will light you up and it will make you look like a movie star. It is the best form of light. And if you can sit outside, that's great too.
you know, that's wonderful light. But also, you know, I will put in the caveat there to be careful if you're sitting outside and there's too much sunlight. I mean, we've had the most glorious, glorious um, beginning to spring while we've all been here on lockdown. And it's been really sunny a lot of the days. You don't want to be squinting and have the light blaring in your eyes and making patches on you. So flat, consistent light. Okay, so that is number one. The lighting, so important. Okay, number two is about angles. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate something here to you. If the screen, that, if the screen is too high and you are looking down at someone, then you start losing authority as you're looking up at the screen and you are talking up to someone and you're losing authority. If the screen is below you, you have double chinitis. And they're also potentially looking up your nostrils, which is not the most attractive look. It's really important when you film a video. Let's try to get this back to where I had it. There we go. To be eye level with the camera. Okay. You want to be eye level with the camera so that you are speaking evenly on equal footing and with authority. Okay. Oh, I'm getting some comments here <laughs> um, about, um, okay, we'll get to those questions in a little bit. So um, you want to be eye level with the camera so that you are looking at someone eye to eye. As you would think about when you're talking to someone at a party or you're in a meeting with somebody, you want to look them in the eye and that way you communicate professionally, directly, or even in a social setting confidently. Okay. You don't want to be below them and less than, and you don't want to be above them. Okay. Eye to eye. Now, if you don't have the perfect scenario for it to be eye to eye, if it's to um, low the screen, you can use um, all sorts of things. I'm looking for some examples here, but you can use cookbooks, you can use Amazon boxes, you can use magazines and all sorts of things to prop up the screen to the right level that you need. And if you're too low, then you can put cushions underneath you to lift yourself up. And at this point, I would like to speak just about positioning a second. So there's this thing called the rule of thirds. So if you imagine splitting your screen, you see I'm making a line, I'm trying to do a line here and a line there. Screen in thirds this way and thirds that way. The idea is not to be completely in the, mm, I'm trying to show you, completely in the center of the screen. Although I have to say, I like being kind of in the center of the screen. You're supposed to be on the lines of the thirds. But the important thing here, I think, is that you make sure you have enough headroom over you, okay? Make sure there's room on the sides of you and that you have some headroom. You don't want it to be you know, just your head with loads of headroom. And you don't want your head to be cropped like this so that, you know, it's, it's completely cut out. You want to adjust and make sure that you have a bit of headroom above you. Um, and that's the ideal scenario for that. Okay, so number three is about background. All right, background. All right. Number one, make sure it's not messy behind you. The key thing here is not to be distracting, okay? Because you don't want the background to distract from you, okay? Some people want to flex their home decorating skills with their backgrounds, and you know, there are all sorts of things you can do. But number one, I think it's best if you film from where you work and where you live. So in your home office, film from your work office, okay? film from your home office or if you're like me and you've picked a dedicated area with the backdrop then film from there but the key things are for it to be simple for it to be not full of clutter um, and for for it to be representative of the message that you're trying to get across so if you um 
you know, if you're a photography person, you might have photos behind you. If you're a florist, you might have some flowers behind you. You know, if you get the idea, if you have, I have some books behind me. I have my book that I wrote, The Mind of the Female Entrepreneur. And in that top corner that's empty, I'm planning on putting a quote that I really like, but I haven't decided on what yet. Like I said, I've just moved into this house and I'm working it out right now. And I'm working out whether it's best to, you know, be at this angle and have that, or whether it's like that is not, you know, you have to play with it and you have to work it out. But the important thing is that it's not cluttered and it's it's not distracting because you don't want the background to distract from you. Now, what a lot of people have been doing on Zoom, for example, um, is putting a uh, plain background behind them, which is also an option, you know, either a plain white wall or a white sheet. And that is also, that's really not distracting. And then you're really able to focus on the person that you're speaking to, but it can also be a little bit boring, but on zoom, this is advanced. You can play with the backgrounds. And if you have a plain background behind you, it works as a green screen. And then you can put all sorts of things behind you. You can be all the places that we can't travel to now. You can be in Paris, you can be in Dubai, you can be on a beach, you can take one of your own photos from a location that you've been before. But this is a bit advanced and your face starts getting lost. And you know, if you wanna do this and you really have to sit and play with this, I mean, it can be fun for a social sort of thing. And uh, my family and I, we do a family Zoom call every week, you know, from Australia and all over England and, and you know, uh, we have all sorts of backgrounds going, but, um, you know, I only recommend this for fun and if you play with it because it is quite an advanced thing. All right, next we are number four, which is where to look. All right, this may sound obvious but you need to look at the camera. Do you know where your camera is? Because a lot of times people, they just look at themselves. Okay, look at the difference. Right now I'm looking at myself. And right now I'm looking at the camera. When I'm looking at the camera, I'm talking to you. I'm looking at you eye to eye. So you know how I just said about where you want the camera to be positioned at eye level. You want the camera to be positioned at eye level and then you want to talk to the camera. So I'm filming from my laptop right now, but oftentimes I film from my phone. Um, and on your phone, just to point out, your camera is over here. So if you're filming something like this, right? Let me show you. And you go to video, okay? And then you flip the camera. Okay, you just hit that icon and you flip. Okay, and then it's recording yourself. You need to look at the camera, which is over here. See how my fingers in front of the camera now? You have to film in front of the camera. If you're not sure where the camera is, either on your phone or on your laptop, just take your finger, take your finger and look and see where your finger is, is where the camera is. It's not over here where I'm looking at myself. Okay, it's over there. So on your phone, you have to look into the camera when you're speaking. On your laptop or your desktop, you look over there where you're speaking. This is so important because you want to have eye contact with the people that you're speaking to. And that's what makes this a real conversation, not looking at yourself, but looking at the person that you're speaking to. And that's what gives us a sem what gives us the semblance of, of it being a real conversation. Okay. So make sure to find the camera and make eye contact with the camera. That is so important. And another point here, is don't speak to the camera, but speak to the person, okay? I am speaking to you right now. I am speaking to you and I'm speaking to a person. I'm not speaking to a camera. And this is really important. Be yourself, be how you would be if you were at a work meeting, be how you would be if you were at a party, you know, engage, be yourself, speak to the person. I know it feels weird speaking to a camera. It's either you're speaking to a camera or you're looking at yourself, but speak to the person that you are speaking to, be yourself and be genuine and you're not gonna go wrong, 
Okay, the next thing is about makeup. All right, now um, in the blog that's going to follow from this, I'm gonna have some great tips from you from a makeup professional uh, who is a, um, uh, a networking connection of mine from LinkedIn. And she has some great tips for you, but I'm just gonna give you some top pointers right now, which is first of all, don't put anything on that's very glittery. Okay, because the camera doesn't like glittery things and it reflects it badly. Try to be as mad as possible. Also, be aware of the fact that on camera, you come up shinier than you would normally. So try to blot, you know, your face. Put some powder or something to, to try to decrease the reflection and the shininess. Because even if you're not shiny normally, on camera you look shiny. Hopefully I don't look shiny right now. Now, when you're putting on lipstick, don't put on like something really glossy and really shiny because then your lips are just going to be shining and people are going to be staring at your lips like, oh my God, you know, if you put on glitter, your eyes are too glittery. They're just, you know, it's, it's going to look funny. So try to keep your makeup matte. Try to keep the shine out of your face. Try not to have glittery, shiny things on your face. And then a note about what you're wearing. Also be very aware of patterns. Okay, I like wearing patterns. Um, I like wearing bright colors. Bright colors are great. They make you stand out. They make your eyes pop. To my eyes look green because I'm wearing a green top, matching green earrings. But that I'm wearing a solid color is the point. I try to wear solid colors when I'm on camera. And when I'm in life, I tend to wear more patterns. If you wear something that's too patterny, it can get very distracting on the camera and it doesn't work very well. Uh, so the key is just with the background, try not to be distracting. Okay. Keep it simple and have the focus on you. All right. And then the last thing is about how to speak. Okay, now this once again might sound obvious about how to speak, but you know, people get nervous about being on camera. And this is a question I've actually um, just gotten here um, about, um, about being nervous on camera and how you uh, deal with your nerves. <sighs> okay, people get really worried about being on camera and there's nothing to be worried about. If you're doing a live like this, like I said, there are um, a whole bunch of different things that, you know, um, you can do in order to prepare, to know what your goals are before you're speaking, to know who your audience is that you're speaking to. But if you're uh, going into a work call, a Zoom call, or a social call, then just be yourself and don't worry about the fact that you're on camera. I know you can see yourself and that's distracting, but don't look at yourself because you shouldn't be looking at yourself anyway, because if you're looking at yourself, you're not making eye contact with the people that you're speaking to. So focus on looking at the camera. And if you find it too distracting, the fact that you're here and you can see your image of yourself right here where I'm waving my hand, then you can turn the video off or you can, you know, change the screen. You can do um, different things to blank it out so you don't see yourself, minimize yourself. And just focus on talking to the camera and just be yourself. And remember when you speak, you use your hands, you use your face, you use your eyes. You know, don't speak like a wooden robot without emotion because now you're in front of a camera and now you have to be very, no, you wanna be yourself and be the wonderful person you are and let your personality shine. Okay, so that brings me to the end of my six top tips for showing up on camera. I hope that's helped you and I hope it's gonna help you to be the best self that you can be. And, um, and if you enjoyed this, then I'd love it if you subscribe to my newsletter. Um, it comes out once a week. Um, I don't bombard you with loads of things and it's all about um, giving you great tips, great advice, inspiration, and motivation. And the way you get on that is just sign on to my website, www.marinanewington.com, and you will see a link to that. And you will see loads of wonderful free resources um, that you can get involved in from self-care, to beating stress, to um, gratitude, to cooking demos, 
and I'd love for you to um, take a look at it all. So um, come to my website, www.marinanewington.com or follow me on social media. All the tags are gonna be here. And I'm gonna throw in a few links um, to some of my really great free resources that I've done for you recently to help you deal with COVID um, in terms of self-care, gratitude, and dealing with stress. But um, I hope you enjoy. I hope you take these tips on board. And if you'd like to know anything else, then let me know in the comments and I'd love to talk to you about that. Okay, I will see you next week. Have a great day. Bye.